So I haven't had a ton of tree jobs lately, and that means I've been out sort of tinkering in the shop, and I built myself a porta wrap. It's not like porter wrap, but when I say it, it kind of sounds like porter wrap. But anyway, it's port a wrap. It's like a inline rope frictioning device. Big surprise, I haven't wanted to buy one. You know, I just, they're just a little bit on the expensive side, like over $100. So I made this one, and I kind of dig it. A porter wrap basically has like an attachment end on one side. This is the side you would like lash to the tree or the truck or your friend's leg or whatever. Then it's got some ability to uh, guide a rope through it, like feed a rope through it. And this one you can feed it through or you can crack this open and do like a midline rope attachment. So if you didn't have the end of your rope, you could just slide it in there. And the wraps are what it's all about on a porter wrap. So you got your rope around your grinder. You got your rope here and you would wrap it. You'd wrap it one, two, three, four, whatever. How many times you wrap it? And then you would start tying off and ultimately you would do a closure tie off. Closure tie off one and do another one here and you'd be all good. This thing would hold your work. So I built this port wrap and I like it. I like it a lot. It's small, it's perfect for a lot of the stuff I do, but I figured I needed some other options when it comes to porter wraps. Not that this one's not good, but you know, I kinda want like a bigger one and maybe one I can permanently attach to my truck. So I'm gonna bust out a couple different varieties, you know, like subspecies of the porter wrap. So this is the bar I'm gonna use, and I think this stuff is originally intended for like um, 3D printers. And this big boy, I'm just gonna really cook it, you know, kind of work the weld from the ring down to the pipe. The pipe's pretty thick, but I figure I should put most of the weld, most of the heat on the ring.
still hot, but I think it's ready to cool off, be tied up, and uh, be clear coated. You know, you could paint these babies, but I kind of like the steel. You could buy a Porter Wrap. I'm not saying you can't buy one, but you can't beat the price of a DIY Porter Wrap. And for me, I just like stuff that's got like a little bit of character. You know, it's like your own thing. You built it, you use it. If you want to change it, you can tweak it. All right, so we got Porter Wrap number one and Porter Wrap number two. Porter Wrap number two takes more wraps than Porter Wrap number one. Porter Wrap number one is smaller and more portable and it's got that inline connection option. This guy, if you wanted to go inline, instead of feeding it through the hole, you really just got to run it around the ring and then start doing your wrap. All right, two down. Next one is for the truck. I found this guy on the side of the road. It's a little beat up from, you know, like banging down the highway. Porter rat, man. And this is just a little bit funky welding wise. I'm just putting a bead like down in the crack. I'll probably double up on that. And then I'll put another one in this crack and then get some kind of swooping stuff underneath. All right, step aside, Porter Wrap number one and Porter Wrap number two. Porter Wrap number three is the Trailer Hitch Porter Wrap. And uh, bigger than the other two, we're kind of scaling up in pipe size, pipe dimension, pipe diameter, whatever you want to call it. It's got the option to feed through the trailer hitch hole, which we'll have to see how that works out. It's a little bit, it's got some rough edges down here, just a little bit. So I don't know if that's the way to go. If you don't do trailer hitch hole, you could always just do straight up wrap. And I left a little bit of this texture on here, which I figure adds, you know, a wee bit of friction. And that would be a single tie off. And with a longer stub, you can do the second tie off off down here. Uh, before we get into testing the porter wraps, we need one more, the big boy bollard porter wrap. It's possible that you don't know what a bollard is, but it's cool. It's kind of like a porter wrap that's more beeftastic. All right, now I just need to find a base for the bollard, and it needs to be kind of rugged. I've got some plate, but that's like eighth inch. I don't want to use eighth inch. I do have some quarter inch I was kind of bending on, but that's not gonna work. This is quarter inch. Oh, here's a gill size of quarter inch plate. Maybe I'll just sacrifice that for it. When you start calling something a prototype, you know it's it's not exactly what you want. You know, it's just a little bit messed up, but you're kind of at that point 
where instead of doing it perfectly, you decide to just push ahead and you're like, well, it's a prototype. Well, it's a prototype. I got my half moons, which are, you know, just a little bit skanked out and uneven, but functional. And then I went a little hog wild and I welded on just a bunch of rebar and stuff just because I wanted to stiffen this thing up. Plus, I was a little worried that my half moons weren't going to be enough beefage for my hooks. So, you know, it's not like necessarily pretty, but I'm going to forge ahead with the prototype because that's what you do sometimes when you're making stuff. You get all prototypical. So I've just got this guy flattened down on the bottom and then a little bit of a groove for it. All right, testing time. We got all four lined up from teeny weeny to medium to hitch mount to bollard with strap. Let's put these guys to the test. See which porter wrap is the best. It is 30 degrees and somehow raining outside. So I'm gonna set up shop in the barn for the test of these four porter wraps. For this test, you're gonna have to use your imagination just a little bit this is the base of the tree and then the line is going to go up to the loft in the barn where our weighted object awaits to fall And I'm just going to do the same thing on all of them. I'm going to do a big wrap and a lock just so we can see how it holds first before we exercise the friction action. And this is maybe like the worst rope to do this with. It's just like a really stiff rigging rope I use sometimes, but it'll work. It doesn't have what people call the bend radius going on. <laughs> all right, we're tied off down here. Just got to go up top and kick off the weight. Okay, we're up in the tree. We just cut this baby off and it's about to fall. All right, so the log is a swinging. Let's lower it easily down with the porter wrap. All right, the keg log has survived, is ready for porter wrap number two, the medium to big porter wrap. All right, medium to heavy porter wrap is at the base of the tree. It's time to kick the log. This is actually where our cats sleep up here in the hayloft. All right, uh, test number two, time to kick the log. Oh, looks like it held. <laughs> Port wrap number two, it's just got a little bit better of like a bend radius for that stiff rope. So it's got a smoother, uh, smoother lowering action. All right, time to hook up the bollard. You know, Already I can tell this one's like the best in terms of stability, you know, like when you're yanking on it 
It's not flapping around. It's just exactly in one place. It's got the big old fat bend radius. So, you know, not as easy to set up or carry with you or anything like that, but it's beefy. Bring uh, back up in the top of the tree for the third kicking of the log. We cut it, we tied it off, it's ready to go. Oh, look, it's still here. Give it a wrap. Give it a wrap. So I gotta say, so far, of the three, if I had the time and I didn't mind carrying this thing with me, I would rather use this. It's awesome, it's big and solid, locked in, easy to pull off of. But you know, the little guys got their place, especially in the tree, and just a little bit more portable and flexible. You know, you can't always set up a ratchet strap and everything, but this is nice. All right, last but not least, we gotta do the trailer hitch porter wrap and normally i would have pulled it right in here but this is like a slushy mud fest so we're gonna have to do it out front by the shop all right i hauled my gear including the log out to the truck which happens to be parked next to a tree so let's see if we can set up a little scenario to test the final porter wrap the hitch mounted porter wrap Now, I always had imagined that the rope would be coming from this angle and uh, kind of wrapping this way, but you know, can't always get exactly what you want, so we're gonna make this work. All right, hitch mounted port wrap hooked up. All right, now, since we're not in the loft of the barn, we gotta do like a little toss action with the keg of tree. So just again, use the imagination. You're up in the tree, you're cutting the keg of tree, you're cutting it loose, and then it falls. All right, now it might not have been the most thorough test of the hitch mounted porter wrap, but I like it. Kind of like the uh, Uber Bollard. You can really yank on this guy, and I could imagine you could also tug it with your truck to tension if you needed to. I'm just saying if you needed to. With that, the Porter Wrap prototype project is done. I've got a bunch of other tree gear DIY projects on the channel. Actually, there's a playlist down below that this video will now be part of. You know, like a bunch of gear you could buy, but you could also make. All right, thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you in the next project.